Welcome back, you guys. I am going to show you guys how to use Autodesk Sketchbook today. Uh, one of the most versatile drawing apps that I have found on our iPads. And, and uh, for something that's free, it has the most amazing amount of options. It's very, like I said, versatile. You can use it for all different types of things. So today, we're going to get started with a general sketch here. Um, and I am going to click a new sketch, but you can see that there's also options of bringing in an image, bringing in something from iTunes, and scanning in from your sketchbook, which are great, amazing options. Um, but we're going to keep it simple today. When you look here, you can see that you could do some different presets for the screen resolution, um, and they have a couple of other different sizes here. I'm going to create a square. Now, when you first get on here and start adjusting your presets, you're going to see um, that there's a lock here. So when you start changing something, you know, you're going to have issues with um, the bottom one kind of following along. So if you want to do something separate, keep it separate. One of my key things is that I would never make something under 2,000 pixels. So I'm going to do 2,400 pixels here, and I'm going to do 2,400 on the bottom just so it's a simple square. Um, but I would never go under 2,000. It just won't have, um, you'll get like pixelated images, and that's the worst thing is to spend your a long time working on something just to have it be pixelated. So. Uh, once you open it up, you can pinch to zoom in and zoom out, which is super helpful when you're doing more detailed sketching. And I'm going to show you three things on here today. I'm going to show you this toolbar, I'm going to show you these drawing tools, and I'm going to discuss with you these layers. All right, so let's just get started from the top. Up here, we've got a couple of different options. Let's talk about if I make a mark and I don't want it to be there, there is an undo button up here, which is super helpful to be able to undo and redo. Um, if you don't want to keep going to the top of your toolbar, one quick shortcut is to take three fingers and to swipe to the left, and then we can undo something. Um, and it's, it will save you a ton of time. Our next tool here is a selection tool which allows you to select specific areas to make adjustments to. And when we do larger assignments, this will be super helpful um, to go ahead and go in, and then this is our transform tool, so we can move things around, and we could change the size of something. Um, so selection lets us select the area, and transform lets us change the size of it. Over here, we've got a paint bucket, which is helpful if I wanted to um, paint inside of a closed image. There are also way other ways that we can um, paint something or color it in. Uh, for today, we're not going to be using too many of these tools at the top, but I just wanted to show you all of the different options. As you can see, I'm going back and back and undoing everything. Another way if you just want to like start with a clean slate, um, and I have a bunch of marks here, is I can go over to the layer and just clear it out. Um, over here, we've got some guides. So we've got rulers and circles, and we've even got this curved ruler that helps us get this nice curve here. Um, great tool to help you with your drawing, but I'm also going to show you another tool that's called Predictive Stroke that helps you create something nice and clean. i got to turn symmetry off. Um, so this Predictive Stroke is, so if I turned one down, I could see, oh, I've got this line, but it can be like a little crooked in some parts too. What it's going to do is it's going to start to see, you see after I make a mark, it, it cleans it up for me. Um, very nice tool, especially when you're getting started. Because if, let's say, I want to draw a circle, it's going to figure out that I wanted it to be a perfect clean circle. I'm going to clear these marks out so that I can show you what symmetry is. We're going to spend some longer time on this symmetry um, option, but basically it helps you like mirror a drawing, and there's some really cool things that you could do here. You can create characters and mandalas, and we'll go into more detail about the symmetry tool and all of the different options that are in there. But right now I'm gonna turn it back off by clicking it again. Oop. I'm gonna turn it back off by clicking it on again, and I'm gonna clear off my screen. Um, this tool lets you add photos and bring it into your drawing. Uh, 
absolutely fantastic for creating characters and um, putting a reference photo right into your screen. Uh, we can do perspective. When we start to explore space and we start creating landscapes and buildings, perspective is going to be such a nice tool. Another thing that you would be surprised is that a lot of drawing apps don't have a text tool. And in here, in, in Autodesk, you can actually, you have a couple of different fonts here, which is great. Uh, you could change the color here. We could change and distort it over here. Um, there's all different types of ways you can mess with your text here, flipping it vertically, horizontally, um, which will be super helpful that you don't have to go into a bunch of different apps in order to do um, pretty basic things. Over here on the right, we've got the uh, screen recording. So if you wanted to create a time lapse, uh, this is a place where you could choose to turn it on and off. And over here, if you want to keep your screen pretty simple while you're doing some complex drawing, you just want to see your drawing, you can turn all your toolbars off and turn them back on. Now let's look at all of the different marking tools over here with our brush palette. So our first tool, and I'm going to come over here and choose black uh, for my color wheel. So you can find a color wheel right there. Um, and so our brush is a kind of simple, basic brush. It's perfect for sketching. It's thin and medium soft. For every one of these brushes, there are ways you can adjust it over here on the side by holding it down. There's also an, a whole library here where we get a bunch of other brushes. I mean, so many options, so many textures that you can work with, shapes that you can work with, paint splatters. I was afraid to show you this right away because I knew you'd just jump right in and put a bunch of paint splatters all over your work, but that's fine. Glow for when we want something to glow in our illustrations. It's amazing. But for today, let's work with the basic ones and get an understanding for them. So primary pencil, basic, medium, soft. Markers work like markers. As you overlap on top, you see it starts to get darker. Our airbrush is really nice for creating lighting and shading to an image. So again, we can build it up over time. This is a technical pen, so very thin lines, very controlled thin lines. Our fountain pen is a lot like a calligraphy pen, so fantastic for adjusting line weight. Here we're going to see how watercolor will build up. So it has that airbrush uh, quality, but the texture of a watercolor. And what I really like about it is it blends as we're painting with it just the way watercolor does. Um, and then we've got the Tattoo Inker Pen, which is a great basic pen that flows really nicely. A lot of people like to do um, their under sketches with the Inker Pen. We've got a tool called the Smudge Pen, and this will smudge something out. And like I said, all of your tools have different presets and adjustments that you can make. So flow is like, how hard is it gonna um, make a mark when I touch the screen? Um, and strength is also going to change like how sensitive that mark is going to be. So messing around with your strength and your flow and the size of your brushes today. There are two different erasers. There's a cashmere eraser, which is a soft edge eraser. And then we've got our textured eraser, which is going to have a little bit of a texture on the outside, but a harder edge to it. We've got a charcoal blender working a lot like charcoal. Uh, making some marks. You could see a little harder um, and more textured than our airbrush. And then we've got a chalk pastel. This chalk pastel reminds me of the inker pen, um, but it has that chalky texture to it. And some people find a tool and they stick with it and they love it. And it's all about what ends up being your style and what you'd start to discover about your work. So when we start working with acrylic paint, it's got that more like dry quality. A lot of these brushes will act the way that that material does on, in real life on real canvas. Because then when we look at something like the oil mark, a little softer, a little smoother, but still going to have that brush quality to it. And then at the end, we've got a color builder. When we get into painting, 
our work, this is going to be a really cool tool. So before we get started with your basic assignment today, over here on the side are layers. Now you've been seeing me go over here and clear out a layer. Um, but what we want to get used to is working on different layers. You can click the plus to get a different kind of layer. Now, if I'm doing a really detailed drawing and I want to go ahead and color in my drawing, I can do that in a variety of ways. Um, but sometimes you don't want that drawing to be disturbed. So if I came here and I started coloring, I'm going right over that drawing. What if I don't want it to go over that drawing? What if I want it to go underneath? Well, then if I click a layer underneath and I start to do a drawing, it's going to go underneath it and it's not going to disturb that one. So play around with doing things on different layers. Very helpful when you're drawing a portrait or something. Um, you're going to want to get used to doing drawing on different kinds of layers to keep them separate. Because you can also change and add things here too. You can you know, cut some things out. You can, if I have a layer selected and I do a transform, I can just transform a part of it because it's a part of a separate layer. Um, this layer is just that little fill color that I have there, so I can go here and just adjust that layer. So it saves you a lot of time if you organize your space by layers. Um, and it keeps, you, it gives you the freedom to alter and to change things. So again, looking, we've got a copy, a cut, a paste, a duplicate, a clear, a merge. You can merge your um, layers at the end to like simplify it a little, little bit. You can also delete a layer. It's a great place to keep your stuff organized. So for today, your assignment is to keep it simple. Let's create something abstract. Without imagery or any photographs, keep it very, very basic. Shapes, lines, and colors. Work with multiple layers. When you're gonna turn it in, I wanna see a whole screenshot of your screen, so that way I can see that you've added separate layers for your drawing. Now, keep all of this stuff visible, but also don't overthink it. This is a time to explore and to be free. And I just wanna see that you're getting familiar with this app and the tools that it offers. So, create an artwork that incorporates all of these tools. Keep it simple mess with shapes, lines, and colors. You don't have much time. This is a one-day thing. In our next tutorial, we will create something a lot more specific. But for today, this is your exploring time. So play around with your brushes, play around with some tools up here, keep things on separate layers, and let's see how it goes.